Hello and welcome to the Overlap Rugby Podcast. I'm Dara, that is Shane. Hello. Um, we are here. We're going to be talking about all things rugby as the uh, test internationals are going to come thick and fast between now and the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Last week was a little sliver, a little appetizer with the Fiji Maori game, which did not disappoint. Mm-hmm. We will be talking all things Fiji Maori in due course, including the rematch that's happening in Rotorua. This is it, um, yeah. We're also going to be talking about the rounding up of the Women's Super Series and mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about... Um, the, some other news of the week, I think, yes, as well. Yes, towards the end. Yeah. And um, then, first of all, mm-hmm, headliner, all that. for all of that, we um, are going to be speaking about the Rugby Championship. Um, and uh, starting, obviously, with the South Africa um, are playing Australia mm-hmm. on Saturday afternoon, followed by uh, Argentina think, against the All Blacks yes. in Buenos Aires in Saturday evening. All of this UK and Ireland time. Mm-hmm. Um, a band... Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all of that all of stuff. That. And yeah. hit the little bell icon you'll find when we uh, put new videos up. But um, yeah, drop comments as well in the video videos to come because uh, we'll enjoy that little bit of conversation. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, without uh, any more of that ado, we'll get into, uh, like you said, the first one of the weekend, first one of the Rugby Championship, which is Springboks v Wallabies. Yeah, which if the last few years are anything to go on, it's going to be a super interesting game that no one can really kind of call or predict because there's been many a different a different tale to this exact uh, fixture over yeah. the last few years. But Springboks with their home advantage is one thing that I like. It's in Ellis Park, Joe Ellis Park, yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, that's going to play a factor. Uh, the Wallabies obviously traveling and over. I also think that just Springboks at the moment are probably the slightly slightly better placed side to do well or make oh, a for challenge sure. for this for this whole tournament overall. Yeah, the, uh, Aussies are still kind of reeling a bit and have been for the last few years. But but like in the wake of losing Falao mid season uh, in Super Rugby, there's a whole shake up going on with what their team is. For sure, uh, for Czech, sure. Czech is under perpetual pressure, but there's really no alternative either, and it's just yeah, they're they're stretched thin but the latest news obviously there was the loss of Falau he left mm. Quade Cooper out of his squad he did. so we're mm-hmm. expecting Bernard Foley who's been his man to be the man obviously um, you know headliner for those watching the full show is that we're shooting this on uh, Monday. Uh, Monday evening yeah. so we don't have the squads yet we don't have the, the sides yet and uh, for those watching the full show, the lighting is going to get darker as we yes, go. Unfortunately, in the sun to help us. By the time. very end, it's going to just be pitch black. <laughs> but um, uh, that that to do aside, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, we don't quite know the squads. But mm-hmm. We have a decent guess. We have a decent yeah. guess, especially so, in the case of the Springboks, who are quite mm-hmm. a settled team. Sure. Um, for the Wallabies, it's more interesting. They have more problems to solve. Yeah. Um, probably a lot of Brumbies going to be in there. They're going to have to be, surely, in yeah. the pack as well, especially with, uh, as we were talking about in previous shows, they're not, he hasn't elected to yeah. not uh, not bring those big locks, Skelton or Fardy, from yeah. uh, from the Northern Hemisphere. So their kind of hands are tied in, uh, in, ter- in several departments. Yeah. And the Brumbies, based on this year's showing, are, are the most worthy of it, certainly in the Absolutely. pack. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'd be, I'd be keen to get those locks starting, Coleman yeah. and um, uh, uh, Rory Arnold, Rory Arnold yeah, yeah, um, yeah. who've both been really, really good this year. Um, Absolutely. They'll be looking to get... Pocock on the field um, at some point you're Pocock is gone Pocock's I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. at, at some, some point you're in the tournament either they yeah. want him back in action but it's in the gonna meantime be they're going to be looking at Hooper Jack and Dempsey maybe. probably Jack Dempsey is what yeah. I was going to say but uh, there, it, there's like a few little rotations that could happen there they need to have a look at some some guys there's also like interesting things in the back line things like Adam Ashley Cooper being returning to the fold um, where's he going to fit in where's he yeah. going to fit in he's been at centre a lot mm. of the year um, are they going to be I feel like playing there one of the things that I, well, obviously all speculation and the sides mm. will be named on Wednesday but one of the things that the Wallabies are probably going to do they have their 10 in Bernard Foley Neil Afano is going to be back up 10 I think they're going to keep Beal at 12 mm. he's been 12 now he's settled in that position for a while he's moving from 12 to 10 he's in that midfield sure I wouldn't like the instinct is to move him to full back after after Falao going it was his first and most natural position and there's a big Falao sized hole in the backfield but I don't think that they have a top class 12 I think mm. they should put him keep him in 12 and I think they can replace Falao um, obviously not on the field but you know, you, they have quality fullbacks who they can they bring do, in. Yeah, Dylan Petty is a lovely player. player. Um, Rhys Hodge can play, probably will be on the wing, but mm. can play fullback. So they have options there. Sure. Um, and then Jack Maddox will probably be on the other wing. So yeah, it's hard to pay, it's hard to find out where Adam Ashley Cooper fits into this. It, does, it is, isn't um, it? But he is versatile and in, in he could be on the senior wing. as well. So he, I don't know. Could take Maddox jersey on the wing. Yeah. Um, Alternatively, he can be thirteen. Him linking up with the they won't. They're they're going to pick one of Karevi or Karevi and they a current Karevi 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 Karevi
they, one of those two is going to play 13 and they kind of feel like they need that physicality um, probably a little to make up for the uh, the Beal in 12 which is like as lovely a footballer as he is yeah. um, it's a bit he a provides bit, a bit you with like, some of that what Ashley Cooper would he's a very smart footballer and can link up with the wide channel yeah. which is key to what the Wallabies do True. Yes. but if you want to run those screen balls you have to have someone believable running the short line and mm. Karevi and Kurandrani both give you that they do yes um, which of the two out of curiosity would you go for at 13 Probably Karevi, but I don't know. It's it's, it's really a toss up in my head. Yeah, um, um, both very good football. Both good footballers. Yeah. Both bring similar kind of physicality. It's really just who both have the who same you think is in the better form. Um, um, sort of naivety sometimes. Sometimes their position yeah. can be a bit little little wrong. They're also I would say slower on the turn than than an Adam Ashley Cooper in that position mm. as well. So if they're wrong footed, they're not not great yeah. on the scramble. But uh, but they're v- big physical lads who bail uh, bail Beal out of a few yeah, physical yeah. responsibilities in, sure. this, in the centre partnership. So yeah, you're probably sticking with one of them, which is the. It's also quite there. a settled side. It is. Yeah, um, they've been playing a certain style under checks anyway, and despite losing Falao, they won't really want to mess too much yeah. with what they're trying to do in the back line. And that's the thing. That's the whole thing about check and check as Wallabies is that they haven't really had the luxury of doing you know what other sides do with this sort of period of the World Cup of sort of trying to build this massive squad and get this depth chart of three players. Mm-hmm. Czech is very much just finding his 15 that can compete. And he's 23 that are going to yeah, be challenging for the World Cup. Yeah. Because like, uh, they've always, in 15-man game and in the 23-man game, they're all, they always have that amount of players that yeah. can go toe-to-toe with the very best. Yes, it clicks um, for them. I mean, yeah. that's the thing, is that they don't have a lot of depth at back row, but if Michael Hooper and Jack Dempsey have fine games, it's mm. a very tough thing for any back row to cope with. Exactly. Let alone a yeah. Khaleesi-less Khaleesi- Khaleesi- South Africa That's one. true, which is a factor, yeah. Um, South Africa themselves have... Uh, had a few injuries like obviously Deante you were saying during the week is uh, is out on the wing so they have they do have myriad different options yeah, yeah. On, on the wing but it's, uh, a, it's a much more settled side when you look at South Africa you've got mm. you know I, I think I think the side almost picks itself I'd be very surprised to see it deviate from you know Kits off at loose head Marks at, t- at hooker tight head is a strange one I think Malherbe is the incumbent but I would like to see Vincent Koch in there from Saracens yeah, I, mean, he's done definitely, I think he's the get, best scrummager he'll definitely get some game um, time now uh, yeah. in, over the next few weeks whether that's this week or, or yeah. then weeks to come but he'll definitely be taking a look at Vincent yeah. Koch because he's been excellent for Saris all year the second row is interesting there are, yeah, there are uh, genuine uh, options like, yeah. you can do many different things my argument is probably that Snyman's the first one in there yeah, I would, um, say, I would think oh, so. Based on, on this year's showing, he's got, form. He's added a lot of strings to his bow. First of all, very mm-hmm. dynamic, as we know, very mm-hmm. explosive. Um, he was brilliant against England in the June series last year, if you know, if you recall, yeah. when he was making his, his leap into the international realm. He's also developed this really acute defensive line-out capability, yes, which is a massive. Yes, a great poacher too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, he's so big, like he he's a very imposing yeah, figure in the line Athletic and, and dexterous yeah. as well. And yeah. He's very good at getting the ball away, keeping the ball alive. Yeah. He's almost got hints of Leone Nakarawa to his game. Somewhat, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's that big and, big and dangerous and get around all these tackles with some lovely offloads. Totally. He's doing that all through the last yeah. phase of the Bulls season as well. We were seeing him mm-hmm. pull out all those tricks. But I would argue that he has to be in there, and I think they're going to go going to stick with that. Um, well, what's interesting is that uh, uh, they actually uh, the talk out of the camp is that Diager has been really impressive in training, really, yeah. which is interesting as well. And then the other thing is that in the, in the incumbent um, so, uh, selection obviously had Khaleesi in it, but interestingly they had Francois Lowe on the bench, and because they had Khaleesi, they picked Peter Steff to Toit at seven mm-hmm. I don't think that's going to work without Khaleesi sure so I think you've got to you, you, you've got to take him out of there and then you have a decision of what to do with Peter Steph can you put him covering back row or, or second row off the bench yeah which is or are you option. going to trust him in and start him I would probably err on the side of the bench more so so I want to balance the back row properly with our back row options behind Khaleesi rather than Peter yeah. Steph who we know can kind of mm. kind of play there but yeah and he's also destructive but it's like, like mm. anything any uh, of their second rows who don't make the start will be destructive off the bench, even like yeah. Franco Mostert and, uh, as well. Franco Mostert's on. another one. He's yeah. the he's an incumbent in there as well. He was mm. so it's it's very very it's difficult. Packed. It's a it's a competitive little area, but I I mm. think that Snyman's done enough, and I think Etzebeth probably is their go to guy still. I I don't think he's infallible or undroppable Etzebeth at all. I actually think. Yeah, and as well now I'm, mm. I wonder whether he's going to get the captaincy because I know Khaleesi's he's not there only a good point I, I, I'm sure they've before, announced but I've it, never so actually right. thought he is the best as a captain at all I yeah. mean it, like why in those years while Hatsbeth was captain it did, like something about give, something about that yeah. team just didn't sit right they should give Pollard the captaincy I would argue that more yeah. yeah that would be better even though like 
sometimes tens as captains mm. doesn't go as well as yeah, you think. But uh, and if he has a hint of like what Johnny Sexton has, where he's just uh, or Owen Farrell, actually, you see it sometimes in the cap with captain's armband that they're just yeah. not the best at tactfully talking to the ref in the heat of battle because they're too. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably and, a good point as well. Yeah. yeah, there is a genuine dilemma. It is. Yeah, so, without Khaleesi there, I don't know who the obvious captain is. Un- unassuming and yet what a leader in terms maybe, of maybe he Malcolm Marks. Malcolm Marks, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, just a hooker as captain is always a decent look anyway. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, he's near enough the ref. It helps with scrum time. You know, like yeah. it's it's tougher having a, if you're if your fullbacks your captain. Yeah, it's very yeah. hard to communicate anything at scrum time. Indeed. Whereas if the opposing captain is in the row shouting yeah. at the ref, you know. <laughs> so in terms of what they do at the back row, I mean, mm-hmm. your guess is as good as mine. I feel like Francois Lowe at seven feels natural. I think we know Dwayne Vermeulen's at eight, mm-hmm. but then inside that you have Marcel Cotsia back in the mix. You have Elstad from genuine from seven. Six. Elstad genuine six. Like yeah, um, you know he's big and strong but has had a barnstorming season and then you've you've Quagga Smith as well yeah so they've I don't know what they're going to go for they, they, any of them are good arguments but mm-hmm. a lot of very fine players and fine footballers and I think that either mm-hmm. lower could see it has to be in there to balance things out and then, yeah. then you have options with the other two yeah. but I think Vermeulen's definitely Break a so, if, so you're just yeah. picking your number six in mm-hmm. my eyes really well picking yeah. one of two for the seven and then trying to find mm-hmm. what you want to do with six who you want to have a look at because I think any you of could go like, could see a low you could, could do that. Could see a low and yeah, especially for this week if they're trying to target Australia in that area. A poke yeah, plus Australia. A plus Australia is you know? exactly right. Um, and then um, the halfbacks. This is where you know Springboks have a significant advantage. They do. Just a sign. Just I mean, Genny has been been decent, but uh, mm. the Faf and Faf and Pollard are right up there with the best in the world in their positions at the sure. moment. Like yeah. it's genuinely. It. This is where I think South Africa. If those boys can play. That's that's what gets South Africa going with ball in hand. Yeah, um, um, yeah. Comparatively, like I, I do think the Aussies were probably a bit silly to be leaving Quaid out of the equation. Yeah, because I agree. It, it just it means that if the Foley option isn't working, there's not really a significant change that comes in off the bench. Whereas even though I like with the with the half back or the uh, out half options for South Africa, I really think Pollard is number one. And with and with unless he's going down injured, if the game's still in the balance, he's staying on the field. Yeah. But if the game's put to bed. Yang and the brand breaking up a little bit. Yankees can come in. That's a, that's absolutely. Yeah, fine. he tends to look quite flash in those situations. He does. As well. He does actually. Yeah. yeah. Um. And yeah, they they still have. They they're wondering what they're doing with their second their, their replacement backup for Faf. That's really what the Springboks don't quite know. Yeah. Is who's got, the answer to that? Because Faf is definitely you've got a nine. Herschel Yankees coming in with a mm. fine season as well, and he's in the mix. And then Cobus Reinach, it was nice to see True. him get the call up as well. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, definitely um, interesting options there. Better than Van Sale, who was the incumbent yes. in that position. Is it Van Snail? That Van Snail was dubbed, was dubbed, dubbed by yeah. on South Africa rugby match. Yeah. yeah, the centres for the Springboks, um, very, very crucial. Defensive 13, um, mm. I think they have two very, very fine footballers in the 13 jersey. But that's where Australia are going to target. Australia are going to look to get outside them. They're going to look to exploit you know, shooting wingers mm-hmm. and get outside them. Mm-hmm. And then obviously get uh, Karevi or Kurandrani you know, on that outside shoulder, but primarily running that short line of the screen ball, getting the ball to Beal's hands, and if if the Springbok D gets at all narrow, that's when they're going to the flash it pass. wide and yeah, get the yeah. ball into whoever's at fullback, Hale at Petty and your Maddox and your Reese Hodge, and, yeah. and you back you back whatever combination to be able to execute if they are given that that's time and space do, yeah. in two on one. Any Aussie team will will absolutely. Put that away. So I think. For me, I, I've i been a, a staunch lover and defender of Jesse Creel for a long time, and he is the incumbent in that jersey and has just, for my money, very rarely, if ever, made a mistake in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but but on form, Lucan Yoam mm. is my guy. I think he's been brilliant this season. I think he's as sharp a defensive centre as mm-hmm. there is. And he's very, very calm. and un- like He just covers the space that needs to be covered. He has a big-picture look to his defence. So even when it looks like he's not in it at the moment what he's do- like he can drift sometimes when he sees in advance if Beal has the ball in his hands and he's out here mm-hmm. he's going to go oh god already I know that this is going 15 metres down the field but I'm going to need to be there to make the tackle yeah. and he's off very, he goes very savvy on that yeah. front has, has a good read on the game where, very much where so he doesn't have the ball in hand and then similarly yeah. he is, is very capable with it like yes. he's, he, he's not over afraid to throw a pass when it's on oh, yeah. and he can execute that off either he doesn't hand drop the ball pace. he, he scored that clutch try for the Sharks that's that got them into true. the playoffs very true big um, moment 
And then would you, I'd be pairing him with Delindy, who is the incumbent, who I have seen yep. no evidence to drop him. I no. think he's actually yeah. a quintessential Springbok looking head on him in the, mm. in the 12 jersey, which is yep. great. And partners very well with Pollard. And I actually think that's a really nice balance to that, uh, that particular centre partnership. I think yep. it'd be very tricky for the Aussies to get around yeah. or through. I, I would have um, Esther Hazen just in behind him as well. I would mm. go for Delindy. I like mm. Francois Stein, it's cool that he's in the squad, but for I right now I don't see room for him. No. Um, I almost see him more as a as a backup, more as an more of an option if, if Pollard goes down genuinely. Yeah. If you have a choice between Yankees and him at ten, maybe yeah. that's where you get crazy. They're, they really do not want Pollard going they there. Really this this yeah. team could do without that. He's happening. A phenomenal He's form. Been great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great Top scorer season. in Super Rugby. His place kicking is on point. Yeah. He's leading uh, genuinely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a wee bit annoyed, proper little yeah, kind of pissed off. I think off he has the just the right year. amount of sex and bite to he him does, at the moment. Yeah, he he hates to lose. You yeah. can see it all over his face, and yeah. hates when it happens, and yeah. seems to hate losing to Kiwi sides, especially as well. Yes, it's indeed, just too yeah. regular that it happens. <laughs> it's just too familiar a <laughs> yeah, picture. Yeah, um, but uh, no, he does have all the right kinds of grit, and that was exactly what was lacking in the Yankees era, and it was what was annoying me about the team was just the. The soft, the look, tameness, the soft look of fifty-seven to nil defeats. Well, were this coming. is it. Like they came yeah. to Dublin and, and shipped fifty. What was it? No, no, no that was 40, 30, thirty-eight. It was points. fifty-seven nil. Was against, it was the, against the All Blacks. Yeah. yeah, but came coming to Dublin. Like no Springbok team should ever be coming to Dublin and shipping thirty-eight points. No, uh, at all. Like yeah. um, to see like Elton on the, kicking Peter. three after half time when they're fourteen nil down and then yeah. on the bench just interiorizes. Like it's not what I think of the Springboks at all. It's no grit. The the Irish team yeah, that day yeah. looked more Springbok than the Springboks. Indeed, but. I think that has fundamentally changed, and I think Pollard is the kind of little, mm. he's a little spirit, talisman, yeah. spirit animal of that, that essence of yeah. what it is to be a Springbok, and he's totally. like, he's a bullish head on him, and he yeah. doesn't shirk from contact at all, he won't mind running into Bernard Foley or Curtly Beal all day, as the case may if be, if the picture exactly. unfolds yeah, yeah. and it's a soft shoulder, he'll um, take it, yeah. um, and he'll have Vili LaRue to back him up, he doesn't have to do anywhere yeah. near the amount of playmaking work that some other tens in other And that's uh, why they can to afford to have the functional hard men defensive centers mm-hmm. i think villy and faff are the key to that because they're distributing helpers and to their Pollard speed and yeah. their speed yeah. exactly right and they can link up with the outside channel mm-hmm. with their killer finishers mm-hmm. and i mean we haven't touched on yet obviously diante being injured Is sucks it? breakthrough yeah. player of the year last year he's been in fine form for True. the lions he's been the best of the lions himself and malcolm marks yeah um but he's going to be gone they have interesting options to fill his jersey it could be Mapimpi. I like Mapimpi a lot. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. would want to air on the side of someone who doesn't shoot in so much. Mm-hmm. Maybe someone more savvy like Dylan. Dylan Lades, Lades was what I was thinking. I yeah. would quite like to see. I I think he's a fine footballer, but I think what they will go with is more pace than that. And I think mm-hmm. that might be yeah Mapimpi um, yeah. or Encozy. But it, as you say, Encozy was on the other wing. So uh, yeah, and you Cozy do you want to move Cheslin from the right wing where he's yeah. comfortable or That's do you not? The lead that we've been burying is Cheslin Colby. I mean, what a season! Yeah. I mean, he was good before. He's, he's gone to he's another gone to level proper this year. awesome this year. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. He can't be ignored. Whatever, about, like Elstad to lose form is enough to have him in the picture, and maybe. Yeah. But, but Colby is just a, a nailed in starter. He's in my been untackleable. Awesome. Yeah. He's been untackleable for the whole year. Sidestep in a phone box kind of was his totally. feet are magic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I'd be starting a him. A treat to the I, European uh, rugby fans' eye all is, year, yeah. and I'm very excited to see him play test footy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, now, who do you want to partner with him? Yeah. This is it. I, yeah. like, there's, I think there's a, bal- a good balance if Dylan Le- Lades is there with Vili LaRue. I think mm-hmm. they're less vulnerable under the high ball for, for, for one yeah. thing. But I also think, yeah, their out and out speed that they tend to go for for the wings means mm. that probably Mapimpi will get the nod. Probably. Is what I think. There might be a little more sense in Lades, though, just from a defensive perspective. That's what I think. Just because yeah, yeah. that's where Australia. Because even, v- even Vili LaRue, even yeah. though he's a fine fullback, he's sometimes mm. vertically challenged in that yeah. area. And, uh, yeah. you know, the, the Aussies, even the Philadelphia Aussies, have worked a fair few high balls into their. They won't into kick their it that much. Um, I don't know. But um, it's, yeah, it's a curious picture. I mean, obviously, you would you would gather, I, like, for me, it's it's. The Springboks have way more talent. Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a World Cup winning squad that they've assembled. It's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that distribution network of Faf and, and Pollard and Villy is fantastic. They got these big bruising forwards. Eat to a man that they're bigger and stronger than those Wallaby yeah, guys. Same with the centers. Same with the centers. Mm-hmm. Um, all very dexterous. Good on the ball. Um, at home in Johannesburg. A, a, a proper bench to bring off. Yeah. Like Beast and Tawira. Scott Brits is going to be in there off the one, bench. One of Mustard or uh, Steph yeah. Detoy. Uh, Peter Steph, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, just incredible options off the bench. Mm-hmm. Jesse Creel might even get a shout in there. Yeah, he yeah, could be covering that. Um, yeah, because he can play wing as well. So yeah. he can actually 
might not be a bad 23 option. Yeah, it would be feel less harsh to, than to drop him yeah. completely because he's been such a stalwart. But that's my point, is that I think that the Springboks have, especially in the absence of Falao, probably a lot more talent. For sure. But the Wallabies can have more savvy. And the Springboks, if there's one thing that they've lacked for all of their talent and all of their uh, muscle, is that little bit of savvy. Yeah. And, yeah, guys like Michael Hooper could have a massive disruptive game. If you sure. can catch them a little bit loose and a little bit not technical enough on the offensive breakdown... That's where guys like Pocock have had a field day in the past and it's mm. time now for Michael Hooper to step yeah, up. And even Jack Dempsey, if he wants to grab yeah. a jersey, would, would want to be getting stuck in around there too. Absolutely, um, yeah. Yeah, like my, my feeling is that away from home, uh, first same game, same game of the season, it's going to be too much for the Wallabies. And I, I, I'm wondering this year mm. how it's going to go for them. I, I feel like it, there could be dangerous times, but I just don't know. I'm curious to get a look at what they, mm. what they look like for the first time since... The, yeah, like there's, there's a, the there's a lot moment. less settled nature to the Wallabies yeah. team. You can't just rattle off them like like you were able to with with the, with the Springboks, mm. or even with the Wallabies last year. It was a bit yeah. more predictable than uh, than it had. The absence now. of Falao shakes a lot of things. It does up. a lot of the, what I they were doing the is given to him. The decision you know. to not bring Quaid is a mistake. He's an op, like he's a talented. I, I think it's a, a more of a mistake to not be bringing the two sensational. Oh, that, and, that too, um, that too. Fardy and, and Skelton. Fardy and Skelton. Yeah. I think that's a crazy omission because yeah. however good those Brumbies were, I think yeah. those two boys would Tell be you what, that straight even's the odds. Mm. Like if you put those boys in that Aussie pack, Fardy and Skelton, even back row, second row, mm-hmm. wherever you put them, all of a sudden you're thinking, Jesus, the Aussies could get Aussie some plays off here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the thing is that we can't sleep on Rory Arnold. He's had a very fine season. And I, I don't think Adam Coleman is fit right now, but I think it's going to be Isaac Rada. Who's so Rada's like, been good too. Very good years, player. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, so they, they do have options. Taniela Tupo, a tight head, has been mugged apparently in South Africa. What? He had his phone jacked off him and apparently got cuts to his arm. Wow. So I don't know if he's going to be fit to play. It would suck if he wasn't fit that's, to play. I hadn't. I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, but that's, um, that's mental shit. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's that that um, dynamic as well as if he's injured, they're going to have to do other things tight head. Tight head, yeah. But yeah, the way I look at it is Aussies could have an advantage if they play speedier rugby, catch a sluggish defence if the defence doesn't work for the Springboks, mm-hmm. if they can get outside them. Yeah. That's an area of profit. Be aggressive at the breakdown, make it yeah. a mess. Turn their wingers around is always a good bet if you can mm. kick sharply against Vili LaRue. Vili LaRue as a backfield manager isn't as good as your like Rob Carney's. I mean, mm-hmm. Elite kicking teams like Ireland have caught them off in that sure. in the past. Yeah. If Bernard Foley can challenge a bit of that that's an avenue for success breakdown definitely catch him sleeping trick plays off set piece definitely catch him sleeping yeah but generally speaking i think the spring mocks are going to be in charge of the scrum the Probably line the out zone. the contact zone yeah. big time and if they can get all that going with faf de clerk running the show and pollard running the show and the crowd are, getting into it there are tries to be know. had yeah spring mocks should be looking to put them away yeah it's a massive game for both teams because there's two like the argentina argentina is forget about argentina being a walkover yeah this is an World extremely tough competition and there's every chance that the loser of this game goes zip in the whole tournament Mm-hmm. which is crisis ahead of the World Cup already yeah. for whoever it happens True. It can It can get snowball very quickly in this competition, actually. Yeah. One loss can become three very, very, very quickly. They don't like, get the do-over. Like, no. usually one of these teams screws up in one of these games whenever mm-hmm. Australia and South Africa play, and then they make yeah. up for it when they when, play when the they reverse play, and fixture. And just cancel each other out. But they don't, ha- they don't have that, that true, luxury. It's interesting this dynamic yeah, this yeah. year with the abridged version. So, yeah, my, my, my thought is that if this it's stacked for the spring box and mm. uh, I'm making them favourites to probably put at least 10 on them um, and if I'm trying to make a call but as, in, as you say by, ten. Yeah, by yeah. around 10 or 10 yeah. plus um, but I think the Austra- the Australians can compete with them mm. if they it's like you say if they can find bit of grass savvy, if bit they, of brains yeah, that's how you do it to be up for the physicality if they're, if yeah. they're softing out of ta- tackles or soaking yeah, too many yeah. tackles they'll get steamrolled channel a good defence yeah, yeah. Make, making tackles is huge getting line speed going yeah. is huge yeah. they can they have had decent rush defences in them in the past that okay. have caused teams problems especially teams at the start of their mm. season who are if things yeah. are a little bit there's of, always that factor going on here mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like there's it's, some it's all very fresh it's always it. a good game though and I suspect this will be no different like these yeah. two teams always bring it when they're playing yeah. against each other they seem to their styles match up very well that they both have chances yeah and uh, it ultimately boils they, down to who takes more of them they tend so to be like, ding dong battles they do yeah, 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 so I expect nothing less this time, and I'm looking forward to it, to be honest. Yeah. Very much so, It'll very much so. The, the opening of the Rugby Championship. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we're moving on, we're yeah. almost. 
at the World Cup, and yeah, yeah. this is always one of the one of my favorite competitions of the year. True, um, um, but yeah, speaking of the, the game that comes late, later is Buenos Aires. Is is that on Saturday as well? Yeah, later Saturday on. evening. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I think again UK and Ireland time. Look up the time differences yourself. It's the one thing I won't bother to do. <laughs> um, yeah, at the, um, eleven p.m. our time, right, for the game uh, Argentina against the All Blacks, and I think this is a scary, scary game for Steve for, Hansen for, and the for New Blacks. Zealand. Yeah, this just is, even watching last year and looking how and how seminal Damien McKenzie was in, in breaking them down in uh, some of those some of those little things. So yeah. he's not there. Um, nope. You know they're coming. They're coming with the Jaguaras kind of sprinkling of belief now mm-hmm. after that wonderful Super Rugby season, yeah. bolstered by the likes of Nick Sanchez and a few other players. But this is the Europe. thing. This is the crucial thing because after the Jags game, mm. there was a touch of our like me viewing like okay, they're they're playing a proper elite team, mm. and holes emerge. And the the two holes that have emerged for me that were glaring was a ten, a lack of a ten, a real leader. Mm-hmm. And a lack of a tight head who can lock down a scrum. Yeah, yeah. So what they've done is they've called in a bunch of, of, of players from Europe. Facundo Issa in the back row isn't going to weaken them. Cordero on the wing we know is a magician. Mm-hmm. And then crucially, Nicolas Sanchez, who a lot of their whole season and World Cup hopes is going to hinge on him because yeah. they don't have much in behind him. No. And when he's at his best, he's glorious. Yeah. Um, but if it's him with Diaz Benilla behind him, Mm. That's that's a good strong balancer to, yeah. to, of tens. You yeah. know that's that's decent and totally. it's good to have him in camp yeah. to work with. You know as yeah. well. And then crucially, two tight ends. Yeah. Herrera and Juan Figalo from Saracens, and I think they go straight in at three and replacement tight head. Probably. I don't think just looking can, at what the Jags yeah. had to bring. Like Absolutely. Crusaders put made them look very silly in that. Yeah. Uh, in that. I area. think you go Figalo and then Herrera just because Herrera has such discipline issues, and you already have Lavanini to wreck your head in that department. True. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So that's probably probably the call uh, straight away we'll see but that's massive right. I mean if those guys if Figalo you never bet against a guy who plays for Saracens by the way yes they're all class whispers mm-hmm. at Eddie Jones yeah. um, get more Saris in yeah there. but, but um, yeah if he can lock down a scrum because again whether they go for Tui Nukwafe or, or Joe Moody probably Moody I, I would think mm. um, whoever they go for they're not like they're not the best right. scrummager, mm. but yeah. the Crusaders dominated the Jags. So it would be a game changer if Argentina could lock down their scrum, mm-hmm. don't give uh, the All Blacks anything off that, and then play you know the sort of game that they played against the Crusaders in other departments, only taking their chances, as you say, yeah. making those tackles like they did against the Crusaders. Don't give them that physical edge. Mm-hmm. Get, get your Pablo Materas into the game. And like, listen, when they get the ball, it's kind of like, talking about Fiji I mean they know what to do when they get the ball it's like autopilot they move it wide they move it slick they attack space they use attacking kicks Mm -hmm. to get in behind them the only thing is that the the All Blacks aren't the Crusaders they're a Crusaders team with you know TJ Piranara potentially I would think and Mm -hmm. then Ben Smith and then perhaps Bowden Barrett and like that's game changing because yeah. those guys are really great at covering grass and yes. stopping attacking kicks. Especially teams um, that like yeah, teams cover covering space is one thing that, that this all like team do very, very yeah, well yeah. in that back line. They kind of are very defensively sound and savvy in that in that particular yeah, area. Just so kicking the loosely to them the is never being the advisable yeah. thing. Yeah. And sometimes the Argentinian kick game kicking game can get ahead of themselves. They can mm. kick ball away somewhat cheaply. But yeah. The, the risk reward ratio with the game, mm. with their style of play is such that like if it all clicks and it is in Buenos Aires and like they've had some wonderful occasions there over the last few months bringing, yep. bringing both a Kiwi side and an Australian side there uh, in, uh, albeit in Jags colours so yeah no they'll be bullying for this they'll absolutely it's, yep. it's really is a good opportunity to get one over on the All Blacks and yeah they're um, going to they're going to have a lot of feel good they're going to have a load of fans and because it's a game against the All Blacks it doesn't come with a whole heap of pressure like if they lose and lose badly that's just what happens sometimes against the All Blacks, and True. you can park that very quickly. Yes, um, it's not a game that's that's going to rattle them if that happens. So they are, have have freedom to go for it. Yeah, um, if the All Blacks do click and and do their thing, absolutely they can find tries. I mean, they have just some spectacular players. I mean, True. Cody Taylor at hooker, it, 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 they probably will go for him over Dane Coles. What incredible choices to have. Yeah. These guys with a little bit of broken field, a little bit of a, a hint of an opportunity, mm-hmm. even if other things are going bad for them, they just score tries. Yeah. They're not they're not yeah. flashy tries. They can be, 
but it's all very functional even the flash is functional yeah it's all running my support line in the right direction and we're just going to offload yeah. here offload there there's the space running well, on those two channel. hookers you named they're both so excellent in mm. the wide channels like yeah. they handle themselves elegantly in there and even like, i was watching some of the highlights of the game last year sure cody taylor had that lovely touch and that firing it off the left hand to get to, yeah. to get in his, his pass is glorious it's wonderful passing dan yeah. calls is another 10 that yeah. that's a hooker as well so it was interesting last year their halfback combination was tj and moanga it might be again this year yeah that but might be the different that reasons. might be the form one yeah the thing that we haven't touched on for the all blacks is this game as a step this game and this whole tournament as a stepping stone for what their world cup squad is going to look like because the the nature of their squad is that they have the luxury of changing things up mm -hmm. but they aren't actually in a position right now where they know what their first 15 is i don't sure. think well i don't know uh, their first i don't know what the first 15 is, is yeah. either there's a big few questions they have to answer yeah. one is whether scott barrett gets in there but he's injured at the moment so it doesn't come, in, it doesn't come into yeah. it it's retallic and white lock for now which if those guys it's not it's not a weakness <laughs> like no it isn't um but then they do have decisions to make. Like at six, is it mm. Shannon Frizzell? Is it Via Fafita? That's, I think, probably Frizzell right now. Probably just. Yeah. Uh, but then, well, then are you picking Artie at seven? Well, that's my point, is that seven is an absolute lottery. I mean, mm. I don't know. Like, I whoever he asks has something different. Yeah. Artie Sevilla has been one of the form flankers in the comp. I know you like Matt Todd a lot. He had a big... I do. I, I like, I like um, having a proper number seven. And Artie, to be fair, this season has picked up a lot more of that work. He's getting mm -hmm. stuck into breakdowns more than he had been. I still don't but he's still like a guy who can play eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he's more ball-carrying, barnstorming than, uh, than mm -hmm. the kind of... Yeah, the, the, the guy I want... Matt Todd would just kind of tunnel vision for... Break down, break disruption. down disruption and 10 disruption they did a um, proper his, disruptive job on everything the jags were trying to do in the Super Rugby he was final. very very good in that in that yeah. uh, and in that game maybe yeah. even if Artie sevilla plays at seven instead of him you might see Artie, you know bust a bit with the ball in hand look show a bit of flash show a bit of skill but all of a sudden the ball is just a little bit cleaner when the argentinians have it and, maybe and so. that could be the difference yeah um reed is your eight yeah um, and then nine and ten i mean as you say on form it's tj, TJ and richie and, richie, and mm. the incumbents are aaron and bowden yeah um, so it's so decisions 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 very fine pairings and i don't even think we're gonna, either of them yeah i don't um, even think we're gonna know where steve hansen's head is at vis-a-vis -vis that decision after even this week picks, yeah, like yeah it, it's the, still yeah car is close to the chest and it's it's yeah the he, could, he could go hurricanes tj and bowden mm -hmm. he could go um, uh, Aaron Smith and, and Moanga for tactical see, kicking and yeah, you know, see how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's um, all yeah. They're all good fun options to be honest. They're actually yeah. it, of all the teams going to the World Cup. I think they are the strongest in terms of depth at halfback and uh, and um, out half. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, they just they have so much different different to choose, uh, choose from even and even all the halfbacks that were listed in the Maori squad for the, the Fiji game was like yeah, it's there's just, a, half a lot of just, good halfbacks forget about it yeah. like, there's just no amount of, of of food poisoning that we can do to get them down to not a world class halfback so you can forget about yeah, it yeah. Um, 10 is a little different they have those two guys and mm. that's like at the moment at the elite yeah, level that's Joshua Annie is yeah. in behind them in the squad at the moment but I think realistically they're going to call up Cruden before they start Joshua Annie <sighs> they've never break, broken that they did Stephen Donald where was he he was in Bath or wherever he was, was he was he? on holidays anyway I thought he oh, was was he signed to Bath I thought I don't know but they will they would break that rule. maybe if so, it so came Cruden. to us if for the World Cup everything's out the window well then yeah it, so Cruden can come if, if one of the, one if of one, or, one or two down. of those guys goes down and then if, if he goes down is it probably R Rassing man or Larry Shellman who's uh, EI West I don't know if EI West is good enough to justify all that Lima Sabuana definitely not, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah yeah no but uh, yeah those two are are properly elite anyway and just give you different options depends how they want to play the game yeah um like you could you could go Bowden at fullback so you have Richie and Bowden on the pitch at, at one time and then get Ben Def Smith to the wing Ben Smith to the wing which is what they've liked doing I think Ben Smith is probably looking at this season mm. has lost a little bit of his pace that mm. he had so I don't know like I would, yeah. I like him at thirteen, but I don't think that's it. that's going to happen. Well, the thing is that they've brought a lot of centres in their squad. Yeah. They yeah. have Sonny Bill. They that's have, where their point mm. of least certainty for the last four years has been in that centre. Yeah, they really and just, again, they don't quite know. Crotty mm. and, and Goodhue is in, and and, and mm. for me, Leonard Brown should start. Should start based on um, the season showings. Yeah, yeah. Sonny I think Bill's I think, trying to work his way back through. Yeah, I think Leonard Brown and Crotty is their strongest right now. Probably um, that's leaving out Lamape as well. Who's yeah, also there. I would still say that. Yeah. yeah. Well, my map is good, but at test level, he can get found out for never passing. 
It's true. Yeah. Uh, and it's a very un all black trait. Yeah. No matter what number is on your jersey, you have to be able to get the yeah. pass away. Yeah, um, it, it's true. And you know, while he's a phenomenal try scorer, he does he not, not, a, not, a, nat- not a natural passer of the ball, which mm. can get in the way sometimes when there's overlaps and such. Yeah. And that the All Blacks like to exploit. And then the, the back three is interesting. They haven't a whole lot of depth. They haven't really any depth at, at right wing. It looks like Seva Reese is going to go straight in. It looks like it's going to be Rico, Seva Reese, and Ben Smith. Which is unless I'm missing potent. something, that's well, what they're going to go for. Yeah, that's still a very, very yeah. potent attacking back three yeah I don't know who else do you have as an option there Jordy then? Barrett Jordy Barrett yes you can move Ben Smith to the wing and pick Jordy Barrett potentially if you're doing it makes you more of a kicking game yeah um, yeah that's yeah that's it is that the only cover they have out that's there that's the only cover they have out there wow yeah. that's an interesting uh, interesting thing well so. uh, Bra- Braden Enor uh, he's listed as a yeah, centre centre, but he and actually wing. George Bridge as well George Bridge, George Bridge. was he he's listed as a centre no he's no he's in the back yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, George Bridge. There's an argument for off on season's form as well, but yeah, almost I more. Uh, Reese has been the try scorer, but Bridge has been unflappable. Yeah, I like a man who can't be flapped. Yes, it's yeah. a good quality, especially in yeah, no, a winger who always seems to make the right call. He seems actually, to my mind, the more natural replacement of Ben Smith eventually in that uh, back line than anyone else. He just George seems, Bridge. George yeah. Bridge. He has a, a aura similar kind of aura about him, where yeah. he's like he's not the most physically strong. He's probably not the fastest. He's probably not the, even the most elite finisher among them, but he always seems to choose the right option yeah. and execute it, which is always nice in a yeah. player. You, if you can rely on them to do that, it's mm. probably the most important. Trait. He's not. He's not quite Ben Smith levels. No, he's not. But he still has a few. Yeah. Have, he has a few years of maturing to do before he reaches yeah. that that level of proficiency where you just never see Ben Smith make the wrong call. Mm. Occasionally, it doesn't go his way, or occasionally he'll get caught flat-footed in defence in a two-on-one but he, mm. he won't make the wrong decision yeah, and let yeah. you down that way and he'll, he won't shy away from a contact that needs to be made either sometimes you see that in uh, like when he went off again for that for the Highlanders in that game and then immediately yeah. it was poor little Marty, Marty Banks, Banks showing all the softness <laughs> that he didn't need to show that Ben yeah. Smith wouldn't have shown um, um, so yeah no George Bridge has impressed me but it may be a bit too soon this World Cup is what I'm thinking I don't mm. know if they're going to bring him or if they're going to elect to play him yeah. it may be Severis for the, just the finishing factor yeah um, it's it's a curiosity and mm. there's really any any one of a number of, of those combinations they can go through this week Yeah. Um, and in, in some sense they might be testing things out mm-hmm. um, but they can't they can't sleep on on Argentina no, Argentina, Argentina, Argentina has some will killers. want they'll be so motivated for this yeah. game as well off the back of that yeah. Jag season that the, the like, final that yeah. would have stung and the, it's the fact that it's the All Blacks now it's, it's yeah. they get to make amends but on their home turf you know there's a lot to play yeah. for in, for the Argentine and they've got some fine fine players themselves exactly. I mean, De La Fuente and Orlando aging like you, a fine wine sit, well, like they, if, if, if they are in um, the opposite of All Blacks they're very settled yeah. in centres and they know exactly and what they're trying to do and then back three is, is as good as any Buffelli at fullback is a phenomenon and he's been and great Mojano yeah. whoever they go for they could go Mojano Moroni they could Cordero's come into the squad now they could throw him in there yeah um, there's yeah there's and no matter who they're going to no matter who they pick they're still going to be an awesome back yeah, three and there. that's the thing is like no matter how good in front of the goal line Rico Ioani who we didn't talk about and is phenomenal himself um, mm-hmm. and Sever Reese, no matter how potent those guys are they can't fall asleep on defence for a moment or they're going to get they're going to be made looking very silly yeah. um, which it could could happen uh, yeah. it probably will once or twice over yeah, the course of the game so. whether, whether um, or not they end up winning it I think there are tries there for the yeah. Argentinian side yeah um, and those wingers yeah as like as good as they are going forward there is a little question mark over their defensive uh, totally. frailties sometimes same is true with the Argentinian wingers I think of all of them Moyano is probably the, the most sturdy uh, actually Buffelli as well doesn't mind getting Delgui in his day as well no Buffelli's the fullback and he is he's for me he's the best of them Yeah, just because he's the most rounded footballer he yeah. has that like Rob Carney play in him where he can send a bomb into the air and catch it yeah. he's got the Elliot Daly 60 metre kick in him he does he's a oh, he's big boot of big boot of yeah. he's a fine man he's, a horse he's, of a man yeah he's genuinely yeah. I love how he runs up right with the barrel chest as well. he's <laughs> yeah, a very yeah. strong man he breaks tackles totally yeah. yeah no they're 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 dangerous oh they're dangerous it's yeah. like trust us as Irish men in a World Cup year to yeah. be warning you that the Argentinians are dangerous mm. they always are um, on balance mm. knowing the two teams just as well as I do I, mm. like it's not like the All Blacks are starting from scratch I just mm. think they have such a high level of rugby IQ and such an ability to win games mm. even when things go wrong they just have such an ability to find tries when it matters and while that has been waning somewhat of late mm-hmm. you know the Maori are weaker than they were the Crusaders are a lot more functional than fun mm. and you know there were there was not the same sort of Kiwi dominance this year that there had been in years past True. and there's all that sorts being of said, they still re- yeah. in come to business and they all yeah. managed to squeak their way they did, in the playoffs they did. 
There's mm-hmm. all sorts of signs that they're not quite the force that they were. But even with that, they've found ways to win games. Mm-hmm. And I would just, if I was putting my prediction hat on this week, I would just predict that even if things go wrong for the All Blacks, that they find the necessary tries to get it done out in Buenos Aires because yeah, that's yeah. what makes them the best in the world. It is. It is. Um, well, I'm going to go against you then. I'm going to root for the Argentinians and I'm going to say that they're going to do it by yeah. two points. It would be, <laughs> it would be <laughs> phenomenal. There would be, be loads of noise history. and colour in the crowd. Yeah, there would be, be talk about peaking was, too early then. There I mean, will be talk yeah. about all that kind of stuff, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it's all great chat if yeah. it comes about. So I'm going to root for that to happen, but I suspect uh, your, your prediction is probably closer and more aligned with what the bookies are saying maybe. yes well indeed <laughs> um, yeah, yeah so that is the rugby championship I mean mm. guys this is so cool uh, rugby's Starting. happening yeah. test, test rugby is back, is back. I'm, I'm excited. excited yeah they, they, I mean mm. these great great teams haven't played since November we have mm. been like we've been fed a nice diet of domestic rugby but there's a little bit of Six Nations in with there. a little bit of Six Nations but in there but it wasn't as nutritious for an Irishman no it Nations. wasn't it wasn't I mean, it was <laughs> some fibres and some stuff that I needed in my diet indeed you know? <laughs> But this is this is this is the kind of thing you can just hook your veins to. Yeah. This is Test Rugby. This is the Rugby Championship. This is the the four best sides in the Southern Hemisphere, duking it out. Yeah, and, and it's uh, it's a condensed format, so it's even more heightened and kind of it's yeah. gonna it's gonna happen very quickly. So yeah, no, we're go- we're looking forward to absolutely all, of, all that's to come. It starts this weekend, <laughs> totally. Um, um, yeah, so. Uh, I suppose the we'll move on from that and say that there's one one game that we have to look back on and look forward to the New Zealand Maori and Fiji. Yeah, uh, awesome! What a awesome game! Awesome job, Fiji. Fiji. Got it done. Yeah. First time since was it 1957? 57. 57. Yeah, they beat the. Do you believe uh, that? Beat the, uh, beat the, the New Zealand, Zealand Maori, Maori. And, uh, and did, they were good value for it. They were better. Did so, than them. Did so yeah. comfortably and did so off the back of a strong defence. And yeah. that's crucial yeah um, that's building on where they yes. were last year with yeah. that with that France that's, performance like John it's... McKee is determined not to let that that defence coach absence sink him and every interview I hear with him he just impresses me more yeah like oh, I actually something... think that Leinster should sign him <laughs> <laughs> at some point that would be so cruel taking him away from Fiji yeah, yeah I know yes no, like we could have that Chiefs team back in the day no, yes we were <laughs> definitely amongst those who were <laughs> feasting on that carcass at that point but no, I think John McKee, yeah, you're right in saying he's building mm-hmm. things. Like even this this week now, he's rotated out a fair few players. People players like Ben Volavola. Um, there's massive. There's, there, the whole squad he, is, is shipped out. There's no Volavola, there's no Mata, there's no Nakarawa. Who the were spine both awesome. of that team. Yeah, 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 awesome in that first showing. But they, their depth is such that they can afford to do that. Yeah. And he's still working. He was saying he's, as much. He's, he's sounding like a tier one coach when he's talking about he's going to, going to rotate the squad, go to Rotorua, have a look at some other combinations. Check, check our you know? depth. It's something he needs to know. He yeah. needs to know if those key guys go down. The guys in behind who look flashy as hell in training, mm-hmm. like they're behind for a reason. Are they going to be able to go to New Zealand and, and go toe to toe with the Mary? And that's it, this is going to be good learnings yeah. for him. And it's a hell of a risk. I mean, it's not something you do in any other circumstance unless no. you're taking the World Cup seriously because it's essentially what he's doing is risking losing a, a, a series against the Mary from, 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 from a winning, winning position. Yeah. And uh, and I, I just think that's smart in a lot of ways. Because it's true. Well, he does have a 17-point buffer on the, on yeah. the two game I, series. It would, take, it would take a ways to do it. Yeah. The, the game was a treat. Oh. Fiji were awesome. Yeah. Um, I saw the highlights. I stayed up. I stayed up till four a.m. Couldn't find any ways of what any means of watching know, the game. Yeah. Short yeah, of giving ESPN twenty five quid for a year or month subscription yeah. or whatever the hell it is, it wasn't going to do it. No, so I didn't get to see the full game. I did get to see the highlights, and I yeah, got to read about it. Beautiful tries um, in there. Like, speaking of like combinations, the Bill Matta try with the Nakarawa crazy bamboozling touch yeah, in the middle yeah. of it. It was good to see those combine. So and, uh, Bill, Bill, uh, Bill Matta, who's quietly himself. I think becoming one of, if not the best number eights in the world. He's, he's, been, there, yeah. he's been the key to everything that's been good about Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. And the way he just grabbed Akira Ioani and just says, no, yeah, nope, yeah. Akira get Yoani out of here. Sh- doing an impression of a, a very soft number eight <laughs> yeah. in, that, uh, in that little sequence of play, to be fair. like He's mm. probably sh- showing some of the holes in his game yep. that are making him more merry than All Black. Yep. But Frank Frank Lamani at nine, I think a find was, very sharp, yeah, very good player. Same with that, that week fifteen. Um, yeah, what's his, I can, can't ones, pronounce um, his name. It's a uh, Vike, Vike, uh, excuse me, Vitacani. Vitacani. Yeah, uh, yeah, with the blue headgear, it was awesome. A small yeah. little guy, but and really, really tasty footballer. Ch- lovely chips ahead, attacking, yeah. probing kicks. Good kind of passing distribution game as well. Mm. Good fix and, get, and Naya, show and go for that try. Naya Salevu at thirteen was looking brilliant in yeah, Madrid's which, which absence. I mean, Madrid wasn't even there. This is why, yeah. even even though they're resting all these players this week, it's 
it's kind of hard to say that it's a B team because they just have such depth of quality. Yeah, well, Rodriguez is still actually out injured, so they're even mm. going. But they are bringing Naya Salebu and they are bringing uh, Vetakani mm. uh, from fullback. So those two guys are going to be back again next awesome. week. It'd be good to see more of them. Tui Silva on the wing, I thought was great. Really as well. good. Yeah. Um, and actually, Patrick Os- Osborne is going to be in next week as True. well. Actually, even Ben Volavola, who you were tra- casting his Spurs about his kicking game, but his passing game seemed to be on point. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of Finn Russell in mm. what he was doing. It's true. A lot yeah. of beautiful left handed floater passes that just get outside of the defensive 13. Mm. Rob Thompson, who was big enough before the game, was kind of made a mug of on a mm. few occasions. He was. Yeah. Um, it's it, well, Fiji Fiji's can do elite, that to you, elite like, attack. That's yeah. the thing, and uh, the key to it is offloads. Yeah, they, they just, just don't. Never they just die. refuse to let a breakdown happen. Refuse yeah. to let the defense get set, and everybody's on the same page. It's mm-hmm. like watching the sevens team. They're running great tracking lines. They're always keeping the hands free and alive. And that's the point: is that if there's someone's locked up in a contact or is about to go to ground, occasionally they have to take it down. But they'll just keep it going if yeah. they can, and everyone's everyone's in sync with that. So tracking runners are going to be running those appropriate lines when they get the ball. You're going to scramble to try and shut that down, and mm-hmm. just fling it backward. They yeah. know someone's coming up, and then they'll find the space. This keep it alive, keep yeah. it alive, suck you in, find the space, and it's that simple. And they make it look that simple they because do. they're all extremely skilled and have a very high level IQ for attacking rugby. They do, they um, do, and and this team, unlike other Fiji teams in the past, seems to be putting an emphasis on defence as well. They were shutting yeah. down a lot of what the Mary had to bring. Mm. They were getting in their faces. Line speed was good. Um, yeah. And just, yeah, because they are physically there for the hits. And the totally. it's been just sometimes the cohesion in phase play has come unstuck. And it's still sometimes the case now. But yeah. it'll, and it'll be I, arguably more so down in Rotorua as well. Like, I think I expect a more competitive Maori uh, side. I expect a bit of a little backlash. A bit of wound, yeah. A little bit of wound. They definitely won't want to go back-to-back losses against Fiji. That's no, not yeah. on the cards for them not at all. Not their home fans yeah. either, yeah. So um, I, I suspect this will probably be a more competitive game yeah. even than the first one. Maori is a team that's just so wrapped in pride as well. Mm. And they, they, they it's quite, it's almost like a little spiritual experience being a part of that team. They take mm-hmm. it very seriously. Mm-hmm. And they don't like the, they don't like disrespecting the jersey. Or losing in it. Or which is the most disrespectful thing yes. you can do as far as they're concerned so they will absolutely be, be hungry for it and yeah. Fiji that, that's the great thing about this game is having won last week again pressure's sort of off they won't want to take a step back and get and, mm. and ship a big loss no. but they're going to get to experience a little more of a culture they're going away from home yeah. they will have their fans in Rotorua no doubt sure yeah, but, yeah. Um, but they are going away from home they're going to get to, uh, they're going to get to experience an angry New Zealand team coming at them mm-hmm. and uh, which is definitely good prep again gonna, yeah we're going to get to see them respond to it yeah if there's a weakness in their team like we talk about they do have what's becoming a very very good defence mm-hmm. that can make tries for them through yeah, turnovers sure actually one of the there. tries did come from that turn mm-hmm. a bit of defensive pressure yeah. leading to a drop ball and then another one yeah. that was good of a loose kick forced uh, yeah. forced pack as well yeah no defence yielding tries from yeah. this good you're going to say set piece I was going to say set piece yeah, yeah. it's no, just right. it's so not in their DNA no like the scrum and the line out even rooks they want to avoid yeah they're just like, means of restarting the play yeah it's not they're not a set piece team and that's why like the Georgians might surprise them even yeah. like that, that's the negative Fijian picture in the World Cup is the Georgians mm-hmm. surprising them yeah. and locking them and controlling them down the pace of the game is just a drag to a standstill yeah, and then all yeah. of a sudden you're just, just scrumming and the Georgians just won't stop scrumming yeah. and they're like we gave you your penalty can we play rugby now and they're like I think we'll go for another yeah, scrum, scrum here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's oh. just yeah Loads indeed of hairy Georgian it, men rubbing their hands yeah, together exactly you know? yeah. and that's the danger is that they definitely they, they just see set piece as a means of, of restarting the game and if they can get it to that level where it's fine mm-hmm. they'll probably be okay against Australia and Wales and then they can restart it Wales will definitely be wanting to get a shove on in, uh, in that area mm. against Fiji yeah. more so like Wales have more of a tradition of trying mm. to attack with a scrum a little bit more yeah. than Australia who are more even Australia more aligned, like, like, Australia are more Brumbies aligned boys. with that Fiji kind of thing yeah. of just, just lock down the scrum and we'll go but yeah. then Brumbies yeah do scrum yeah. for penalties and, um, and penalty for malls yeah so they, they do have to be careful it's definitely a work on and I think going into the World Cup it's got to get better than it was last week. And that's the only critique because this was a phenomenal performance. They're mm-hmm. at the level. Mm-hmm. They're better than the level when it comes to attacking rugby. They're just... They are. They're a different level. Different they're plane. just a different level. Like yeah. to anyone in Europe. Yeah. Just forget about it. Their attack is beyond elite. It's phenomenal. Yeah. But it's the set piece and those little... And even know, the rooks. When if the it, game if, slows if a, t- down, if a team manages yeah. to get their tackles in and stuff the offload... 
I suspect they, there are inroads for like yeah. a dog at number seven causing them proper hassle if yeah. there are too many too many rooks. Totally. But they're going to be doing their darndest to avoid that by just getting their hands free whichever exactly. way it's going. Which is why stylistic, it's such an opportunity for fun stylistic matchups. Yeah. It makes them uh, well, they're one always of, if not the funnest like, team yeah, yeah, to they, watch. Like you yeah. can, if you're tr- showing someone who's not a fan of rugby at all or trying to get them into the yeah, yeah. stick a Fiji game on. That's yeah. a surefire way to well, appeal Oh, it's kind of like basketball. <laughs> <laughs> it is when it's played like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't be. It won't be showing you the Brumbies game from earlier in the year. No, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, no. This is a, It's it's some. I, I kind of think the backlash might be too much for them, um, but I suspect this will be a tighter game. In mm. either way, whichever team takes yeah, it, it'll be a tighter game than last they week. Have, it's going to be a proper competitive one. They have impressed me so much mm-hmm. so far that I find it hard to root against uh, to mm. to back against them. Yeah, like I just think. I haven't seen the evidence yet, even though it's sort of, you think historically that it's there, that when a game gets tight, that they will be the ones to buckle and they will start knocking on mm-hmm. and they will but you also slip off seen some the, the evidence with this Mary team, obviously, only no, that's one my showing point that, that they're going to be the ones to do it. Indeed, you that's know? my point, is that I think that I think that when the going has got tough for this Fiji team in recent times, be it in the Pacific Nations Cup and that game in Paris uh, last week, mm-hmm. like and again, perhaps this week, they have not buckled no and that's what he's trying to bet into them and that's what he's trying to bet embed into them as a squad mm-hmm. is actually we're going to take out some of your key talisman we're going to take out some of your biggest most dexterous and versatile forwards and then we're going to see what you can do then because the mm. whole squad needs to be able to defend like we defended last week and, and in paris yeah and this is a, another great challenge to them and on every occasion they've risen to the challenge so far the, 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 yeah. the sort of stepping stone challenges that McKee is laying He's out for them. He's kind of plotting the course yeah. to the World Cup. And, yeah, yeah. and this is the next step of it. And we've yet to see them take a step back. So who knows? Why not? Why, why can't they win back to back? I mean, the Mary it's are true. not all that they're cracked up to be. It's true. Around. It's true. And yeah. like even things like the 10 jersey, Vola Vola is, is probably a bit better than Ottery Black in some of these pressure situations. But he, he's, he's out. He's Vola Vola's out. Vola Vola's That's, out. A it's great so decision because they have no one in behind them. Yeah, and, and who and they like yeah because yeah. it's who are they going to stick there? I actually if, don't if know. If push yeah. comes to shove, or even this week. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, these are all little things that McKee is looking at in preparation because he does just have a wealth of talent to try and mm. compile into a team, but he also has to combat things like you're saying, like where they're. Their just lack of interest seemingly in the set piece get aspect of the game sometimes yeah. that is going to cost them against certain teams. They're going to want to prepare yeah. better, certainly for the Georgia game, which is one even if they get lofty ambitions of of taking points off Wales or and, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and off Australia. You just and cannot court, sleep on the Georgians. No. I mean, if they play to their peak, they could rip Georgia apart. Easily. They could put forty on Georgia, yeah. no question. Yeah. And if if they get a few early tries, Georgia are done. done. Yeah, but. If things start to go wrong, start that go game slow. could become a nightmare. Yeah. That game could become a World Cup derailing nightmare. And yeah. it's something that has to be in John McKee's mind as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is a good chance to kind of yeah. like, like, and th- that's why I approved of the eight different props that were yeah, in totally. the wide scroll. Let's now, see what like, we got. Let's see who yeah, are, yeah. is going to be our best option for locking down a scrum at least. At least long enough to get it out the back and not penalty. <laughs> Indeed, just that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So picking your hooker is probably who's the best at hooking the ball. <laughs> um, you know, that's one question worth asking as well. Yeah, exactly. If we can all get a, get a little nine nine two combo, that's just yeah. ball in, ball out. That'll work well. But for you them. also you you got to be able to scrummage. I mean, it's yeah. not it's not good enough on your own ball because if you get into a position in a game of football where every knock on is an inevitable penalty the other way. Yeah. You're it's really death. struggling. It's very, just, very often yeah, death. You're doing mm-hmm. carnage to yourself. Like yeah. you, uh, no favors at all. No. But overall, like the fact that we're critiquing Fiji this way should mean, like, should be an emphasis that, in my brain, they have switched mm-hmm. from you know, you know, I'm not referring to them as a tier two team. They're this is a tier one team, and these are the margins that you talk about for a side that wants to play in a World Cup quarterfinal. Yeah. Which they do. Yeah. Um, and they're good value for it. Like yeah, talent, yeah. player for player, they never really fit in with the, the rest of the tier two because they're always like nearly the spiritual home of this game yeah and like, then, like a lot of those tier two players are playing amateur footy mm-hmm. and almost everyone from the fiji squad is playing professional european football at a high level and and standing out at that level yeah yeah 100 um, century yeah. so it's always been a case of like who's going to be the one to wrangle these into a team and we even saw it in the sevens when that yeah. year when uh who what's ben ryan ben, ben ryan, ryan in the sevens and how he just enforced discipline on yeah. them and literally going it was like a, a quote from him going like listen boys if you if you put on a showing like after one particularly bad loss i think it's yeah, a semi-final yeah. thing if you do anything like that again i will fly back to fiji halfway before before we get to next week i will replace drop you off on the plane 
bring 14 more guys who are going to try harder for me. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. and that is an option and it's a genuine fear because there's mm-hmm. like, oh, you probably could do that, coach. Okay, I'll try. And then yeah, yeah. they suddenly became very disciplined, and very just, just became structured. became galvanized and, yeah, around it. Yeah. And, and McKee is brought And then that all, went that all the way led yeah. to Olympic champions, you know? Yeah. So this is why I'm not... There, there, there isn't a Olymp- ceiling on it. No, there the, isn't. The talent is... Yeah. There's just not a ceiling on it. No. Yeah. You've seen that in the sevens game, but it's perfectly viable in the 15s yeah. too. Sure, a little bit more set piece has to come in, which mm-hmm. is where like they're more natural sevens. They're, like, they're naturally on top of the world of sevens because it's they are everything about yeah, it, how it, that game it, remo- it removes the set piece and bre- like not quite the breakdown. There's fun breakdown yeah. dynamics in sevens now, but mm-hmm. really, it's removing a lot of those set piece intricacies from yeah. the game. Sure, like yeah, but yeah, like I wouldn't be giving Georgia hope <laughs> against them in sevens. No, but uh, in the fifteens game, they still have a few little creases to iron out. Definitely, but it's de- it's definitely at the tinkering yeah. phase. They have a good squad yeah. there. And, and listen, they- when you consider the fact that they qualified, like the reason they're in the same pool as Georgia is because they found themselves fourth seeded. Mm. Such was the at seeness of them. Yeah, um, the work that has been done. Mm-hmm. by John McKee as coach mm-hmm. is down awesome. near like down near the story of the whole world of rugby the this last, like little last cycle the world, last World Cup cycle yeah. what's the difference in Fiji going to be Massive. is it going to mean bad news for an Aussie team is it going to mean bad mo- news for a Wales team Potentially. it's already meant bad news it, for New Zealand the Mary have already team. felt it you know the French like, have felt it French have felt in it in Paris in mm-hmm. Paris yeah it's um, uh, I, I on their day I backed them as a capable side to beat any, capable of beating anyone because they like like yeah. you said that attack is so elite that yeah. even the best defenses in the world will struggle to contain it totally on, on any given day and if you give them a dry track and a fast track they can beat yeah. anyone you know yeah one hundred percent I'm very excited and uh, yeah just a quick hello to all of our new Fijian subs yeah, I yeah. was super happy to see see that video last week get a bit of traction and, uh, it's yeah. been nice to feel a bit of love from the Fijians yeah. go Fiji go yeah, we're indeed. on your team 100%. <laughs> absolutely yeah. oh, we until you meet Ireland <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah or even when we're previewing that Georgia game it'll be interesting You know, we love <laughs> both sides for completely different indeed, reasons yeah. and for that reason it's, it's the beauty be, of the game you yeah. can have the elegance of the Fiji versus the brutality, uh, brutality and slowness of the, yeah, yeah. of the Georgians, and it's just about who's going to set the pace. Yeah, who's totally. Who sets the pace it's wins. Back that game. Mm. I can't wait to preview that game. <laughs> but uh, but in we the meantime, we'll yeah. talk about this game. But we finished up that game. I think. Mm. Uh, yeah. If you're going to call it, I was saying Fiji. I back Fiji. I'm hoping. Okay, go on. We're going to back Fiji. Yeah. Fiji by two points yeah. in an absolute thriller of a game in Rotorua. Yeah. I'd love that. That Very would class. be. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, it could go badly. But we'll yeah, see. We know. yeah. Um, backlash from the memory is not unprecedented. No, to be and, honest. Yeah, and just sleeping on New Zealand sides in general isn't something that you'd be want to do if you're no. going to last long in the betting game when it comes it's to rugby. True. No. Um, um, but yeah, go. But voting with your heart is something we like to do on the on, on <laughs> every podcasts. now and again. Every now and then. Yeah. So yeah, come on, on Fiji with that. Come on, Fiji. Um, yeah, so I thought so as we move on, um, we do have uh, one game to talk about really from the Women's Rugby Super Series, um, which all wrapped up. We were yep. um, obviously going, uh, we were building up some of the games we've been talking about it over the last few weeks, it's been going on. And it uh, it all boiled down to this week, um, basically the Black Ferns and England duking it out for the championship. And yeah. it, was the, it was the Black Ferns who got it done in the end. And just overcoming two separate sin bidding periods that uh, they had to endure and yeah that, like listen England had been had been sneaking wins and sneaking wins and they had been doing just enough and they looked like they were in the game again and, and mm. the Black Ferns got that yellow card and, and they just couldn't land the killer plunge punch mm. and then the Black Ferns landed two or three killer yeah, punches yeah beautiful, some beautiful that was tries that try that was scored by the winger mm. um, uh, that was put the game really beyond England it was just a gorgeous try yeah. beautiful offloading rugby and just chopped up what had been a relatively slow paced yeah. game and similarly and was, was the, it uh, Kendra Coxich the nine Kendra Coxich, um, showing her TJ Piranara esque or Aaron Smith esque kind of ball in hand skills or bamboozling defenders she is the player of the tournament oh she's great yeah, yeah. And lovely footballer and like box kicks off both feet she was showing against yeah, the yeah. US picking them apart and mm. really catching them napping positionally yeah a proper, I think she was the difference yeah, I yeah think I she was absolutely the difference probably look like England don't yeah. seem to have a halfback that's as elite as that no, certainly yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah. to be fair no team has shown yeah. that she is impressive. she might be the nine. best in the world from yeah. nine um, yeah. has been an absolute handful for everyone to deal with mm-hmm. and yeah it was it was it was definitely a super fun tournament I mean the France saw off the USA dispatched the USA mm-hmm. in their last game to secure third place which was appropriate mm-hmm. and the unfortunate Canadians who had to do all of their runs in a row yes um were uh, in an unfortunate situation of um, having to be uh, <laughs> having to lose that game against the US and put a dampener on what had been a very good showing 
Um, they lost a tight game, but losing too many tight games isn't a good thing. No, they lost that tight game against the U.S. on their last game, which which left them fourth and the U.S. fifth, and it was all probably quite appropriate. Yeah, it it's just had a wonderful color to it. I yeah, mean, on I the think pitch, it's the best one of the best ideas from World Rugby in quite a while. Yeah, but the execution of it was the only yeah only kind of mitigation for I just, it. I think it would be yeah. You'd have been better off having it somewhere in Texas mm. for one, a hotbed for rugby, a bit of it, or like, or alternatively somewhere in England. Um, yeah, you know, like it's it was yeah on the pitch. Uh, we've we've alluded to before, but there was just a lot of fun dynamics playing out. There were almost reminders of of, of sort of earlier professional rugby, which is the stage that this is at. Yeah, one of which being just how much good value a great French team is. Yes, because you still never know what they're going to do. They're yeah. going to beat the Black Ferns and mm-hmm. open the t- competition, throw it wide open, and lose to Canada. And yeah. then, <laughs> it's also funny like, yeah it's, it's the just, French it's, are just wonderful the French yeah. are just wonderful and exactly right mm-hmm. and then the the Black Ferns did are get the chance awesome. that they didn't get in 99 or 07 in yeah. the World Cup to, to avenge a defeat to France and mm-hmm. Did it in some style yeah. and proved that they are the best team in the world yeah. because and they that have was, the that was what was on the line as well as being the tournament on the line. It was it was actually yeah. the, the number one spot because England have gone Grand yeah. Slam this year and then on through this. So yeah, but it was in the mm. end was it twenty six or twenty eight thirteen? Yeah, twenty eight twenty eight thirteen, which is pretty clear daylight and like the second half performance from New Zealand even even with the sin bidding period. They looked strong uh, yeah. in that second half. They really did. And, and to, kind of yeah, blew to pull, England to away, pull away like from from England like yeah. that, who are such an elite team at that level, it was a real statement. That being said, though, um, France shipped a load of points in the first half, and then spent the second half crawling back in Six yeah, Nations yeah, against yeah. England and not not quite getting it done. So there's question marks about that English uh, England side in terms of staying power with the the top top teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, w- it won't tend to matter when they in the majority of their fixtures when they play the non professional sides. They're just yeah. going to swat them aside. But it's, it was interesting. That's what's interesting about this tournament is you just get to see those elite teams play against each other in a way that you don't really mm-hmm. even see in the World Cup. Like, yeah, I think um, on the field, mm-hmm. like it takes a bit of a reach because when you're talking to like a, a marketing person or a business person, they're going to just look at the attendance which I think it was they were sort of hung out to dry in that regard and they're mm-hmm. going to look at the pitch and they're just going to say there's nothing here for but us. I don't see money or whatever. Yeah, I don't yeah. see money, exactly yeah. right. But I think there's, there's uh, on the pitch in terms of entertainment value, I know we're knees deep in this rugby game so we're not necessarily mm. speaking for the average punter. Yes. But I think there was enough there in that tournament to convince, you know, your unions, world mm. rugby, your advertising companies, your broadcasting companies that there's a product here. There's yeah. a product here that needs to be like it needs to be invested in world rugby needs to make the effort to make the pitch better. make it better make, make the ground the pit- better make, make it yeah organized ground make the pitch to sponsors go out, get out and sell it mm-hmm. because it's there and i tell you women's sport in general is is on the massive rise it for is sure. like the one of the fastest growing for sure uh, entities yeah, in the yeah. world and to watch the women's football world cup yeah and we recently had just draw drum massive crowds did. yeah and numbers viewing crowds. numbers as well yeah and um, people like the state every stadium was full everyone was watching it but we watched it um mm. it was and it was as good an end product as, as a football tournament can be it was certainly better than watching ireland play football yeah <laughs> indeed <laughs> and, uh, indeed and absolutely the same dynamic exists mm. when we talk about the um the the, the women's rugby game and, and world rugby need to have the foresight to make that happen for sure and I think this this tournament has such potential I hope to see it come back next year yes. I think it's, it's and be done better and be done better yeah yeah, yeah. learn from phase one but like those five teams excellent value and they're going to deliver mm. excellent manage- matches maybe make the turnaround slightly longer come on get the finger out but that's we're not talking but, yeah and, with and that, that did affect like every side had a loss in the books and yeah. that's probably a reason why yeah well Canada yeah. losing to the US is probably not reflective of them being a worse team than the US no, but it's probably them coming through several bruising encounters their fourth in game in 16 eight days mental mental no team can match the physical stakes mm. for that length be that in men's or women's rugby yeah. it's still rugby and it's going to hurt and it's going to be a physical toll and even that canadian team are quite forward or forward oriented and set Indeed. piece oriented so that, that's so that's how they win games yeah. and when you're playing that often you can't be at your physical peak and you're you're playing to mind yourself a little bit mm-hmm. and you're getting tired quicker yeah you just so you lose that physical so edge, yeah. which is where their game comes from. Yeah. So they're sure we've seen that with Ireland teams over yeah. the, the years as well. But very physical yeah. kind of Ireland teams that are built on emotion mm-hmm. and they can never really go five yeah. games in a row. It's always exactly. there's always one dip. Yeah. More than anybody else, it hurt Canada. It did, um, yeah. which is a shame. 
So yeah, absolutely. Mm. More turnarounds, a bit of sponsor money. Credit to Sky Sports for broadcasting it because that saved it. Yeah, and I added, added an air of legitimacy to it, and they yeah. got it was good. They got that commentator whose name escapes me at the moment. The Kiwi, uh, she does some Super Rugby as well, but she's great commentator. She's a really good commentator. knows her, yeah. knows her stuff really well. Had her in there to help partner the two American kind of co- yes, commentators. Yeah, who, yeah, yeah. If it was just those two, it would have been pretty disastrous. But it was good <laughs> to kind of sprinkle a Kiwi totally. in there. Um, <laughs> so to get some some good broadcasting of it is massive, and mm. then obviously. Um, uh, the the on the pitch behavior from the teams involved like was going to be the making or breaking of it, and mm-hmm. it was high level quality rugby. Really, it was great, thoroughly to... entertaining, dynamic football matches. We didn't know who was going to win. Yeah, everybody was winning. Everybody won a game. Everybody lost a game. Um, so there was a lot to like. Yeah, um, it was great. Just yeah. competitive. It better better even than the Six Nations as far as end product on the rugby pitch because they were all competitive games yeah. with competitive teams in it. So yeah, really dug that, and well done, World Rugby, for putting it on. It can be done better. Let's have it be yes. better next year. Totally, you know? yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's the final word on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, with that, I suppose we move on to our last segment, just before the light escapes us entirely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is uh, Rugby News of the Week, which is our wrap-up section for uh, every podcast. And uh, yeah, just going to run through a bit of what's been making headlines in the rugby world. Uh, I see top of the bills, we have found out that Josh Strauss is returning to the Bulls post-World Cup. To return to South Africa to play for the Bulls. I don't know if he yeah. played for the Bulls before, but uh, that means he's basically effectively ending his Scotland career. Yeah, that's something that wasn't reported, but that I just assumed. It might um, not be the case, you know. He might still be he's, eligible. He's I've seen that before. A, oh no, he is still eligible, but mm. it's just such a curious case study and such a like. To be honest, a bastardization of the idea of the residency rule, which it has is. now been been vindicated. But to to go and play your club trade at Glasgow for a few years, decide to be Scottish in a rugby context instantly leave Scotland and play in Sail and then go back home to South Africa where you're really from and play there, apply your domestic trade there. I mean, is he going to play Super Rugby and then leave in February to play the Six Nations in Scotland? That doesn't seem likely. Yeah. Um, like I think I think that he's saying, I'm Scotland for the World Cup, I'm Scottish for the World Cup mm-hmm. and then moving on. But yeah, his has been a curious case study. That said, a phenomenal rugby player. And a great servant to Scotland. Everything to uh, Scotland. Yeah, and even yeah. Glasgow while he was there. He's, totally. he's awesome. I've always admired Josh Strauss and wish him well, he might like. Do you know what? He might be exactly what that bull side need in terms of a bit of he's certainly a bit of heft turf, and a bit of turf, like a bit yeah, of grunt, yeah. but also a bit of getting stuck in and not mm. being lazy on the yeah, pitch. He which is one thing he's never yeah. never has been. He's probably not the biggest strongest guy no, playing he, in the position. He'll, but he'll, he works. he'll make his tackles. He'll maintain his line speed yeah. for the game. Yeah. He'll constantly be a nuisance at the breakdown. Yeah. And when he gets the we opportunity we to carry, he'll get, carry well. We were seeing him get a bit tired in Scotland's Six Nations campaign purely mm. because he was one of the last men standing who had to do a lot of work yeah, against yeah. some big physical sides who mm. were testing that area specifically over and over again. Yeah. So by the 60th minute mark, we were seeing a very tired Josh Strauss, but still getting stuck in and doing, yeah, yeah. trying to do the work. But that, that sort of bulls dynamic that we associate with them that can sometimes leak into the spring box of just taking some plays off yeah, and being just loose. being being head it's, in the clouds yeah, for a second. It's, it's and not actually in, in Josh's doesn't DNA. Doesn't seem to be. Yeah. No. So it's whether he's can overtake the what the bulls. Yeah. Effect, you know, will the, will the bulls will the, just morph him into something terrible? No, I doubt it. But yeah. uh, no, I think that is, that is a good signing for the bulls, and he'll be glad to go home. I'd imagine after quite yeah. a, quite a successful. European campaign and he's he's been an awesome player great value in the Champions Cup and the Pro 14 Indeed. and now the Premiership as well for the last yeah. year as well he's, Absolutely. he's seen a lot of European rugby he's, he'll come back yeah. a much more seasoned well, certainly from player. his perspective it's been a fine career yeah. and he'll look to see it off in, I would suspect see it off in style mm-hmm. uh, at the World Cup um, yeah. so looking forward to that um, yeah. the next bit of news is massive news that has been you know been all, the only thing off. that's been talked about in New Zealand yeah uh, Bodie. Bowdy to the Blues. Bowdy to the Blues. Bowdy to the Blues. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. I don't even... i got to be honest with you, I just don't know the specifics of how this came about. It ju- I just read that it, it could happen, and then it did happen. And I'm kinda, Do they really want the Blues to be good again? Is that what it I is? I think that might be it. Yeah. I think they might... I think there's there's something to be had in a good Blues team financially. Yeah. Like you, Maybe you, so you, often, you have the potential yeah. for Eden Park to get actual attendances in it. Mm-hmm. And to be fair to the Blues, on the first day of the season... When they, they play, so nearly they, they, they get, get good big crowds they do, yeah, on yeah. the first day of the season, mm-hmm. and then as it goes, they sort of Dream empty away. slowly. Yeah, as everybody starts to realize that it isn't their year again. Uh, again, yeah. Well, whereas with Bowden and maybe Manonu, although will Nanu stick around? I don't up? know. Yeah, um, apparently uh, they're lobbying Jordy Barrett to come and join his brother. <laughs> 
That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. and bring the other bar. Get all the bar. There was a heartfelt place. message of goodbye from TJ. Because oh. him and Bodie had uh, like the most starts together from anyone for in Hurricanes, in Hurricanes history. Hurricanes, they yeah. might have both had the most starts individually as yes. well as together. And now that now yeah. TJ's going to take that off Bodie once it's in yes. yeah, yeah. But the, the band is broken up. Yeah. And what a band it was awesome. from an attacking rugby yeah, perspective. Some, some the, the super, tries those the boys scored together. Packages from yeah. the last few years are heftily featuring those two boys yeah, yeah, more yeah. than just a cameo role. They're stars. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so it's, a, it's a great, it's a bit of a coup for the Blues, really. Oh, like it's a great off, yeah, signing. Yeah. Because they have always been like, guts the canes. It guts does the gut canes. the canes yeah. a bit. And um, having gutted the Chiefs last yeah, uh, yeah. In the last couple of years, we'll see the canes suffer. He's such a canes man. He just, is. Just, he's very quick. He's very like um, just uh, emblematic of how they play the game as yeah. well, with that speed and width that that kind of goes yeah. goes with them. And it's like it's sometimes a little bit it's just incomprehensible. It's, it's, when yeah, it comes it's a flat to, to the line. Yeah. It's chaotic. It's always quick. Yeah, and it's attack, attack, attack. Yeah. And TJ loves it, and Bodie loves it, and yeah. it works well with Leo Mape. Mm-hmm. They've got a really cool vibe going on with that back line. And if anything, it was just their pack needed bolstering to yeah. compete. And now that's kind of gone, and he's going into a blues environment that's God knows what. Well, it's certainly yeah. not a winning culture that he's inheriting. Yeah, in no, that place. indeed. He, he so, has work to do in terms of galvanizing that squad, which is definitely the role he's there to do. He's, he's kind of to come in to right the ship a little bit and just change things fundamentally from what they're doing. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Anyway, it'll make for interesting dynamics this year. Yeah, it'll definitely make for a full stadium on day one for for the Blues again. Yeah, or near um, enough. They'll get the they'll get welcome Bodie signs <laughs> everywhere. They'll <laughs> get um, a big crowd in Eden Park. He's used to playing in Eden Park. Anyway. True. Yeah, um, but it is. It's a. Uh, it was kind of surprising, even though we did hear that rumor a few weeks ago. I was kind of surprised to hear that that happened, and it is a little sad. And I I do feel bad for TJ. And no. Oh, yeah. But, um, indeed, I but, agree. Yeah, that being said, the Blues fans are probably. Like they needed something to share about this year, yeah. so now, now they have Bowden Barrett, then they'll have him next year. Two cents rugby is a happy man. I'd say he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So in in other news, then, uh, w- just in terms of um, squad uh, additions to the squad, um, I know England have bolstered their squad. Just one thing on Ireland is that uh, Will Addison is back from injury and now back into the the mm. Ireland squad, yeah. um, which was me, al- he's always been part of Joe's plans, partly anyway. On the I think I think it has to be as fullback cover. It is. Oh, well, yeah, I'm yeah. sure that's what it is. Um, yeah. Like, he's not really a viable third. It means th- that there's going to be no Joey at 15, which mm. we've been desperately, desperately lobbying for because it makes so much damn sense. It, it hurts. He but, is, however, more of a playmaker than yeah, even Rob is. But like, he's in more in that mold. Yeah, it's refreshing that he's the backup and not Henshaw or Haley. Yes. Um, yes, that he's, he's a better option than both of those two yeah, yeah. Um, from 15, um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, with, with Carney probably still being the incumbent. But yeah, uh, yeah no, that's not surprising. England, however, have added a fair few additions to their squad. It bolstered yeah. a lot of them. Is it got up to forty or something? Isn't yeah, it's squad? gone up massively. Um, yeah. And you were welcome to see the inclusions of Ollie Thorley, Thorley and even little Marcus Smith. Even if he's still not happy. ultimately to feature in the World Cup, Very it's good happy. exposure for him, yeah. young man, young queen. No, I, th- I think that um, I, I don't. These additions make their squad way better. Mm-hmm. Ollie Thorley is not to be held on the periphery, holding tackle bags, and then cut from the squad. That guy has to go to the World Cup. Mm. If he's, he's un- if he's uncapped in a month's time, Eddie Jones should be blooming sacked before the tournament. He is such a potential World Cup bolster. It's not every time, every year, that you have like this world-class winger who pops up the season of a World Cup, lights up club rugby, is very difficult to tackle, has just electric speed, has X Factor. Mm-hmm. And the All Blacks respect it. They see, they've seen it in Seva Reese. They saw it in, in, in Nehe Milner Scudder four years ago. Yeah. And they thought, throw this guy in here. Let's see what he can do at test level. And Eddie Jones has to do that with Thorny because the kid is a star. Mm. And he's been, he, like, he, to watch his highlights for Gloucester this year have been insane. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely glad to see him in there, get him on the rugby pitch. Yeah. Um, that really, really makes them better. And Marcus Smith. Very quality little I mean, he'd, he'd be more yeah. likely to be doing that tackle bar yeah, back row you're he, describing, but it's good to get yeah. him in there. And, he's, and he's only young. You, yet, never, and you never know with injuries. No, know. it's true. You, never you may know. need to yeah. be called upon yet, so that, that um, makes a lot of sense. What doesn't make a lot of sense is the fact that Mike Brown is there. Yeah, and over Alex Alex good. is not still. Mm-hmm. And actually, like uh, you were even pointing out to me that like talking about the, the Saris should be littering that thing. We'd mentioned Tompkins as a more viable option than Mar- than Ben Tio, which I think he is. But similarly, Lazowski. Lazowski's is, is the guy we missed of all the Saracens. Yeah, and he's and just another 
beautiful footballer who yeah. has been in England squads before. Yeah. Yeah. So those two omissions, Mercy. I don't, I, I genuinely don't know what Eddie Jones's problem with Alex Good is. Maybe but it's the three I, day vendors. I think he has a problem with him. He must do. Yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah, this is just wrong. But yeah, um, yeah. he's not picking him yeah. no matter what, seemingly. Yeah. He's just not he's going never to pick him. Eddie I mean, Jones is they, they're going to have a crisis, an injury crisis at fullback. And I don't know whose phone is going to ring. Is Ashton in the squad? Ashton, is Ashton. Ashton. Well, Ashton's in the squad, I think, isn't he? Yeah, but it'll be yeah. I mean, Elliot yeah. Daly or Ashton and now Mike Brown. Anthony Watson Anthony will come Watson behind Mike Brown. Like, they just won't give the best fullback in Europe a chance to play in the World Cup. Yeah, and which is a bit Make of that what you will, I think. I think it's I think, silly. I think, I think, I think their some... mistakes are going to come back to haunt them. I can't see them winning the World Cup making this many mistakes. Yeah, I said as much before the Six Nations and then took a lot of cop for it after the after England the, match. Uh, after the Ireland match. After the Ireland-England yeah, match. Yeah. Which yeah, on the opening day, I was like, England, they're getting so much wrong. They, uh, whatever, I said, I, I don't see them beating Ireland. And then they blew they you out. Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, we did they exposed to... Ireland's holes, and, mm-hmm. and, 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 yeah, which have yet to be sealed. Mm-hmm. But... I was right in the sense that their their consist consistent mistake making in terms of their selection policy and other things that they do did come come back and haunt them and they they ended up sh- dropping points I guess you'd say against Scotland and and and, and losing against Wales and not mm-hmm. being in the reckoning for the title yeah um so Does, I mean, so yeah they're shooting themselves in the foot it seems like because yeah. they have all the tools there and they're just refusing to use them yeah and yet the European Player of the Year is a guaranteed starter mm. in whatever team he's, he's from or whatever yeah. country he's from uh, usually that's what but, you think and that's what you yeah. think and uh, it's more it's like it's just wrong headed and yeah, yeah the, the the lack of classy champion saris in it like there are still obviously some of them but the, the pack the, yeah no listen and, and as I've said I said it when they named the squad originally and this squad that he's named is stronger than that yes. for the inclusion of Torley and Smith mm-hmm. but like no, there's no question that that squad is good enough to win a World Cup, even the one that Eddie Jones has named with all the emissions. Mm-hmm. But I think the emissions themselves and the inclusion of guys like Bentio and other things are, are an indication of some poor thinking. Mm-hmm. And what's more, I I just think I, I think you know little things like the Kyle Sinclair issue and a few other glaring problems that aren't being solved will come will come and bite them. But the talent is there. The talent you never is know. There. Could you never know. Yeah, you never know. They're as good. It. Like their back is unreal. It's true. Um, it's true. So they'll always Billy be. Billy Pola and, and Maro Itoji yeah. can win a World Cup it's by themselves. You know, they'll you know. always be elite yeah. enough to compete um, with the very, very yeah. best. But you wonder will it come unstuck and will they rue some of these things? Yeah. Will Kyle Sinclair give away three penalties in a row in a quarterfinal. And that's all it takes. Like you know, points, that's the you know? thing in these quarterfinals. No matter how good your team is, if if basic unforced errors like that happen. That's all it takes. Yeah. Those are the margins. And that's why t- leaving a guy like Good out, bringing guys like Teo and Sinclair in, that can hurt you. It can do. Um, yeah. Um, so that's it. I'm very pessimistic about England. I always get very hyped about England. I like, I, I like to think I'm fair. It's not a partisan thing. I know I'm wearing the green jersey. Mm. I rant and rave about Saracens. I'm in love with them. And mm-hmm. everyone around me is... We should do- see more of them in the yeah, injured. Every, everyone around me thinks I'm crazy in, in, in Dublin mm-hmm. for, for not hating Saracens. But I don't. I can't. They're yeah. too damn good. But yeah. England's just... Frust- Eddie Jones and England frustrate me because yeah. they don't pick their best team ever. Yeah. They, they have yet yeah. to. They yeah. have actually yet to pick their best 15. That yeah. is what we reckon. Like, we were, even in last year, last couple of years, going, like, where's Brad Barrett and all this? Because he's yeah. just been captain fantastic Thank, for Saris. Thankfully, Manu Tulagi came back and they fixed their centre problem did. without him. Yes. But while Tulagi was gone and Brad Barrett was captaining Saracens and they were picking nonsense in yeah. their centre, it was another. You're scratching your head going, like, well, wait a minute, I don't what? I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, this th- that tends to be a recurring theme. It is born of the fact that they do just have so many players. Totally. That there's yeah. always these arguments. And I'm sure there's many people who will disagree with us on certain things. There'll be people calling for Teo and stuff, although I really don't No, see that's not the thing. Like but, that. yeah, but there's, there's, um, there's de- genuine other. There's other guys who feel left out as well, like Danny Kerr, who doesn't bother. His absence doesn't bother me as much no. as. as Especially so mainly because of Ben Spencer's emergence, and I'm just yeah. like I'm not worried now because I would trust that that boy to do a job at pace for. And he's even got a chance of ousting Ben Young. I think he's, he's better than Ben Young, so that yeah. that would be you why know. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a sorry. Yeah, he's, he's a sorry. Passing is it's on and yeah, yeah. very quick as well. It wouldn't it wouldn't change your game plan at all. Yeah. Switching him and Young's they're, no, they're, yeah, they're still going to be quick off nine, which yeah, is why yeah. the in, this Eddie Jones England always are. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, I still expect that won't be a problem, even with the omission of no. Danny Care. Danny yeah. Care's box kicks are too loose. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're erratic. I just don't know if Willie Hines is going to bring much. That's what people are even out about. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's really the the jersey that's been been nicked from him. Yeah, yeah. But 
Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's not as much of a weakness. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, oh yes, uh, you were saying three three contenders in the uh, under twenty world championship contention because the under twenty trophy yes. is on currently, and is it uh, Tonga and Portugal are uh, yeah, playing? well, Tonga and Portugal are unbeaten so far. Mm-hmm. Portugal, as you said, and not what I said, did show a bit of techers. They mm-hmm. saw off Canada there you uh, go. convincingly, mm-hmm. um, where Tonga just strode through Canada. So it's very interesting. Tonga mm-hmm. are going to play Portugal. For the right to play, almost certainly, unless Kenya pulled the mother and father whole shocks out the window, Japan, mm-hmm. um, who I think might be my favourite to go through the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But the under-20 trophy, uh, it, the final is going to be between probably Japan and one of Tonga and Portugal for the prize of playing in the big, mm-hmm. big under-20 championship next year. Yeah, um, That's just a cool thing that's going on. Yeah, um, a little separate worth. side note in, in, in Tier 2 underage rugby, which is just good yeah. to see future is strong in places like Tonga and Portugal and you know yeah. the end, Japan, always good always to see the Tongans on, on form as yeah, well um, yeah they're a big part like, as much as our love, love affair with Fiji as we had in the last few, week, few weeks I still love all South Sea Islanders and the way they play in yeah. Tonga Tonga have had great sides and wonderful players over the years and it'd be nice to see some of those yeah. some of those youngsters filter through and, and get nice and competitive again yeah um, um, we had the Curry Cup um, kicking off mm-hmm. we have to issue a small correction here we had been saying that the Jags were Jags the Curry 15 Cup. Were, but the Haguaras 15 have actually been included in the second tier competition of the Curry Cup right where they're two games in and, and have put like 60 points on their re- respective opposition with a bunch of guys who weren't even playing for the Jags yeah probably the same boys who were playing for Argentina 15 in Possibly. the America's Cup yeah, earlier yeah. in the year mm-hmm. um, but they've had, they're having a fun time lighting it up in the second division so for the right so to be, be next, next year, year when they when they yeah. come up to play in the Curry Cup for real, uh, and yeah. that'll be exciting. But it means that that this time we we still have our traditional Curry Cup. Yes, you know, like very very core stable yeah. teams. Western and, uh, Western Province got it done against the Blue Bulls, twenty points to five. Solid the win. Lions beat the Pumas thirty eight to thirty seven. What a cracker that must have been! <laughs> Decidedly yeah. Lions esque performance. <laughs> the Natal Sharks, my boys, got. Battered, got Greeked. got battered by the Greekers, mm-hmm. having been gutted, I guess. Yeah, um, slightly, but, uh, slightly <laughs> shorn of their test players. Yeah, yeah, um, but it was, that was that was in Natal, wasn't it? That was in Natal. Yeah, that was Park in Stadium. Oof. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit of a shocker. Yeah, it it's not, good for the Greekers, though. You know, it is good for the Greekers, but no, yeah, the Sharks going to get the finger out and, and get, get prop, themselves up that table, prop them <laughs> up the bottom of the table. Currently, are your that's, beloved Sharks? They are indeed. Um, they are indeed. But yeah, so um, it's the, it's the Lions of the Province uh, sitting pretty atop uh, with Western Province. And they're on five points each and then Western Province just behind them on four yeah um, and so yeah the uh, and the Pumas there on two points must be bonus points is it? And yes yeah, yeah, yeah. two losing bonus points yeah um, yeah so that's all very interesting and the Curry Cup rolls on always a good tournament one of the most historic tournaments in, in the world yep. and uh, yeah good on again good still going strong in 2019 is buried behind the rugby championship it is as it often oh it is it'll, it'll be fe- we'll be featuring it in our other news segment for the, the weeks to come we won't yeah, really but ho- ho- hopefully we'll see a game or two yeah yeah, Certainly, as, sure. as we approach the business end of it, we might we might, might have to check it out. Then see, see, see some consequential action. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, um, yeah. No, we're good. I um, think that might be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're done. One hundred percent. All right. Just as the daylight has dwindled on us, and yeah. we're going to have to wrap it up. But uh, yeah, that's us, folks, for this week. Um, Absolutely. Enjoy the rugby championship this weekend, as I'm sure we, we will. <laughs> we will <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. Watch that, and then yeah, get back to us next week for. Uh, more chat about more chat about the rugby we'll be into the heart of the rugby championship then all of a sudden we're going to be uh, 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 previewing the halfway point such mm-hmm. is the pace at which things are moving here mm-hmm. guys it's time to panic the world cup is soon <laughs> panic uh, isn't one isn't the right word panic mass hysteria <laughs> yes <laughs> anyway like comment share subscribe any of you who are still here yeah love you yeah. um credit to yourself sticking around this long <laughs> listen to us for this long yeah you're, you're you under you're always appreciated by us saints among men saints gods <laughs> among men i would <laughs> all say right. All, all right yeah peace and love guys we'll see, see you next time bye all right you're up blue ball yep let's go Oh, oh, he doesn't even get a throw. He doesn't get a throw. Oh, boom.